Hey, my name is Jake Sloan, and today we're going to talk about the iFootage TC5 Gazelle carbon fiber tripod. Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake Sloan, and I make content here on YouTube for solo creators like myself who are out creating by themselves. And uh, so I review equipment that makes that process easier and uh, do tips and tutorials about general videography and photography. And just so we're clear, iFootage didn't send this to me. This is not a sponsored video or anything like that. I bought this because I needed a good travel carbon fiber tripod that could handle some serious weight. So you might ask yourself, do you need a carbon fiber slider? Because it is a bit more expensive. Uh, or will the aluminum work just fine? In my case, where every pound, or in this case about a half a pound, really, really counts because I'm hiking, uh, carrying everything on my back, or because I'm going in small airplanes or kayaks, every half pound counts because I'm basically gonna be carrying it all on my back one way or another. So I went for the carbon fiber version. You may not need the carbon fiber version. Aluminum version might work just fine. And then you've got to ask yourself, well, how small do you need to go when it's uh, packed up? I like to go as small as possible because everything about what I do, versatility and portability, is crucial. Another thing you have to ask yourself is do you need a fluid head or a ball head? If you're doing principally photography and almost no videography, then a ball head will work great because you can lock it off in whatever position you need. But if you're doing videography, like I am, you're gonna want a fluid head, especially if you're doing uh, product tutorials, product shots, conferences, where you're wanting to follow a speaker around on a stage, even a lot of the talking head interview type stuff I do, that's, that's all important to get the, uh, the fluid head. Because what a fluid head does is it gives you enough resistance to give you really nice, smooth pans as you're moving the camera around. So it smooths out your motion, gets rid of all those ditter, jitters. That's something a ball head just won't do. That's why I grabbed the K5 fluid head as well. I've used other brands, other brands work, um, but I really have been impressed with how well and how smooth the K5 fluid head is. I'm also really impressed by the machining and the uh, craftsmanship that went into building this particular tripod. Being that all of the bolts and the screws and all of that stuff that was used is all stainless steel, it's gonna last really, really well, even if you're out and about in weather like I am or out and about in the winter like I am. The aluminum is really, really well done. It's really, really well machined. The tolerances are very good. It, it fits together great. Everything about it feels really, really good when you're extending it and putting it back together. In fact, when you're packing it up, it's really cool because there's enough resistance there with the air inside of the legs that it actually kind of gives you a little bit of resistance so you can't slam the legs together and do any damage. You can buy cheap tripods, but generally they don't last. And if you're gonna be putting expensive equipment on there, AKA expensive cameras, expensive lenses, or gimbals on top so you can follow yourself around and film yourself, then you need to really think about why you're investing so much money in that equipment, but not investing money in what is supporting that equipment you very, very seriously need to consider getting a really good tripod. One of the reasons I got this particular tripod is every pound counts for me, and so getting rid of about 30% of the weight to get the carbon fiber version versus the aluminum version was worth it. For me, it may not be for you. The aluminum version is great. And then for me, getting the most compact version I could get meant getting this particular one because it's about five inches shorter than the rest when it's compact and that is important to me now it also doesn't stand up quite as tall but for me even at six foot four it stands up plenty tall to be able to do what i need to do so one of the things that's really nice is it has these nice little rubberized feet for when you're putting stuff on rocks but it also has these nice little spikes fortunately there's some snow right near here so uh Let's go see how well this thing works on snow and ice. I can set my gimbal on top of it and use it as the base for the gimbal, and it works fantastic for that as well. It'll go really, really low to the ground, so when I want to get low shots, I can do really, really low shots, and even this center column will flip over, and I can put the camera underneath the tripod to get those extremely low to the ground shots. You want to take the center column out, say you wanted to save some weight, you can unscrew it and it pops right out. or you can also flip the center column around so that the camera is now underneath the tripod if you want to get some really close to the ground shots. And iFootage was really thinking when they put this little aluminum hook here because you can either hang a counterweight bag if you need a counterweight bag or 
hang a little baggie of your stuff for uh, your camera if you need to. That'll keep it up off the ground. Everything on this tripod is really well made from the aluminum clamps. I prefer these lever clamps because they're easy to grab when it's cold and I'm wearing gloves, which it's going to be here any week now. You can go really low with the tripod legs, like really, really low, almost flat to the ground, but still have the nice fluid head action. This is for my gimbal, by the way, and Arca Swiss plate. Or you can go pop them out and go medium low. Medium low, still pretty nice, not as low, but it'll defi definitely get you some of those low to the ground shots that you might want, especially if you're using something like a slider. Another thing that they did is include this Manfrotto style quick release plate, which is great because you can just slip it on and it locks so your camera gear won't fall off. And then when you're ready to lock it down in place, just twist this and it becomes extremely secure. If you need to tighten these, if they ever get loose or anything like that, they included the little tool right here. It snaps onto the side really well, stays put very nicely. If you want to see other videos about equipment and technology I use as a solo creator, you can click or tap right here. If you want to see other videos about drones and uh, gimbals that I use, click or tap right here. I'll see you in one of those videos. As always, if you have specific questions, you can answer in the, ask in the comments below or hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. Cheers!